Welcome back to the channel. My name's Sid, and today we're going to take it back to basics with VLOOKUPs in Microsoft Excel. What is a VLOOKUP? A VLOOKUP, or VLOOKUP in general, is short for Vertical Lookup. A VLOOKUP essentially is a join. You're joining two sets of data together, whether it's a table with another table, or a sheet with another sheet, or one file from another completely different file, you are merging and joining data together. That's what a VLOOKUP does. But what the vertical means is that you are looking up a vertical data point on a vertical line and identifying where your data value matches the data value in another set. And then you bring the two together and there you have your completed join. Now, for those of you who are familiar with databases, a VLOOKUP is essentially a left join. I'm not gonna go into the different types of joins, but I just wanna clarify what a VLOOKUP means, how it essentially works. In essence, you're bringing back a data point from a second data set and joining it with your firsts. Now VLOOKUPs are very useful because they're really easy to use. You can open up any spreadsheet, you can open up any CSV file, and although they work best in Excel, they even work better in the CSV, and I'll come on to why. But in most instances, whenever you're joining data, say you've got a sample file and you're trying to join with another file that someone shared with you or you found online somewhere, or you've downloaded from a dashboard, you can quickly join two types of data and then produce some meaningful results. So guys, we're gonna take a look at some examples here and I wanna show you the very first example of a simple VLOOKUP join. So what we have right here is our data set in green. We've got a list of student names, their ages, and we're looking for their exam score. And this is what I'm calling a base data set. And we want to look up to another data set, which I've conveniently placed in the same sheet, but you can actually have this data in another sheet or even a completely different spreadsheet. It's entirely up to you. And what I want to do is I want to bring back the exam score for the respective student names. And the way to do that is to use a simple VLOOKUP. So I'll show you exactly how a VLOOKUP is structured. So we start off with an equals VLOOKUP and you can see Excel automatically recognizes that you are trying to type in VLOOKUP. You left click on this twice and that will automatically bring up the full formula. So you can see here it's asking for a lookup value and the lookup value here is a name Jack. We can choose age but that won't get us anywhere because there's nothing to join to. We want to look and join on the on the name Jack and that's in cell D8. Then I want to separate that by using a comma. Now we're looking for a table arrays. Our lookup range is this entire data set right here, beginning with the column name, city and exam score. You can see we're going to join on name, which is in column one. We want to bypass column two. I want to bring in the exam score from column three. We need to then click comma again, and then we put three and the three here being that the exam scores in column three. And then finally, we need to tell Excel what type of match we want to do. So here you can select true or false and we're looking for an exact match. So you can just click false, the exact match here. So zero and false are the same thing. But just to make life easier for you guys, I'm just going to hit false. And then I'm going to close the bracket. And that's my formula done. So here you can see it's bought, bought back. Jack. You can see Jack's score is 65. Unfortunately, it's not given us the 65 as a percentage. It's given 65 as a decimal value. We can easily change that by clicking on the percentage sign. Now we have an issue. If we drag this down, it may break. And that's because it hasn't in this case, but what we want to do is lock our range here. You can see this range here needs to stay locked. And to anchor it, we need to use a dollar sign. So we do a dollar sign before the number dollar sign before the letter and we do it on the other side as well and what that means is whenever we drag this formula down the range isn't changing all the time and that's going to be needed because if you if we drag this down you'll see our range has already moved it started off here and by the time we got here it had already moved so we want essentially this red to stay in place like here so to do that we need to anchor the lookup range and once again you can put the dollar values here or you can hit f5 which is a shortcut as well. So now what we want to do is just drag this down and now you can see the values haven't changed, but the range is still the same. So this is correct. So now you have confidence knowing that your VLOOKUP has worked. Let's change all of these two percentages and we can double check this. You can see Jack is 65%, which is correct. You can see Alice is 78%, which is correct. John is 91%, which is correct because you've got him here. And then finally Bill is 64%, which is correct. So this is a very simple example of how to do a VLOOKUP. We're now gonna look at how you can use a VLOOKUP 
to identify a range. So let's have a look at that. Right guys, so now we're in another example of a VLOOKUP. This time you are related to property data. So what we have here is we have four different properties and we have their prices in dollars. And essentially we're looking for a price bracket. So here you can see the price brackets. So you can see the price bracket for a property between zero and a hundred thousand dollars is 100K. This first property is not gonna fall in that bracket. This first property is gonna fall in this bracket here because the value is 150, the lower end of the value is 101, and the upper end is 200K. So therefore this property right here should be 100 to 200K. As a, as a range, as a price bracket. Now, to do this, historically, if, if you weren't familiar with VLOOKUPs, you had to look up each one one by one, and that can be very painful. You have to read the value here, look up the range here, and type it in, and then do the same for this one, this one, this one. Imagine this was thousands of rows long. You'd be here for a very long time, and this is where a VLOOKUP can really prove particularly powerful, and I learned this very late in my career, but I wanna show you guys. So, we wanna populate all of these price brackets, and the way to do that, so we want to insert our VLOOKUP again. So we type in equals VLOOKUP. Excel automatically recognizes we're trying to type a VLOOKUP. We select our source value here, uh, our first value, which is in column E, row 12, which is correct. We now use a comma and we now need to set our range once again. We select the entire range here. As I showed you before, guys, you need to anchor your range. Otherwise, your range will keep changing as you drag your formula down. So to anchor, you can use F5 by selecting into the range or you just put in dollar signs as I have done here. And this is where it's a bit different to your standard VLOOKUP. We're looking to bring back not column one, price lower, not column two, price upper. We're looking to bring back column three, price bracket. So here we type in three. And then finally, this is where it's a bit different for a range. Instead of looking for an exact match, we're looking for an approximate match, which is true. In other words, you can type true or enter true, or you can enter one. It's the same thing. One and true are the same. False and zero are the same in the world of Excel. So just to make it easy, I'm gonna select true. And then I'm gonna close my bracket. And that's my VLOOKUP done. So straight away you can see, correctly identified that this property right here, 18 Clive Terrace, is in fact in the 100 to 200K price bracket. If we now drag this down, you can correctly see it's populated all of our other price brackets. And this is correct. Uh, you can see Dilston Avenue, 550K is a price. Uh, you can see it, it doesn't fall in this bracket because it's, it's 550, 50K above the 500 range. So therefore falls into this bracket right here. So guys, this is an incredibly powerful and uh, use case for a VLOOKUP is to identify ranges. The only thing you need to do, however, is put in your lower range, put in your upper range, and type in your price bracket. As long as you know the ranges, you'll have to write this out yourself and make sure your lower and upper ranges are in order. So you start off with zero and you end up with the highest value right at the bottom. So start off with your lowest value at the top and work your way through the highest value at the bottom. Right, very briefly, I wanna cover some of the pitfalls and some of the potential problems you may encounter with a VLOOKUP. One of the most common problems I encountered as a data analyst for the last several years is having issues with the data type. If you're trying to create a VLOOKUP and you're trying to join against a number, with another number, but it's not working. It could be because the data type of the corresponding data set you're trying to join to or VLOOKUP to is not really a number. It may be a text and therefore your VLOOKUP isn't working. So one way around this is to make sure you're using the right data types. Change all your values to the right types of values, either the text or the numbers, or if you wanna really make your life a bit easy, convert the Excel file into a CSV file. VLOOKUPs work really well with CSV files because there is no conflict when it comes to Excel. With Excel files, Excel often tries to work out the data type, but with a CSV, there is no questioning around the data type. When it comes to VLOOKUPs in CSV files, they come out really clean, so I highly recommend saving your Excel file as a CSV file before doing a VLOOKUP, especially if you've got a large VLOOKUP that you want to do. The second big point I want to make is that VLOOKUPs, while they're fantastic, they don't always work when you have a really long data set. In fact, they do work, it's just that they quite slow. So what I'm trying to say guys is if you have to do a VLOOKUP on say a data set or a list of records which is say more than two, three hundred thousand rows long, I would 
recommend you try something else. Now, your something else may be you need to use some SQL script, you need to use some Python, you may need to use something like Alteryx, Tableau Prep, you may need to join the data essentially in another tool. Don't do it in Excel because you will struggle and VLOOKUPs will struggle and they may break your Excel file or they may cause your Excel to crash. The other big issue with VLOOKUPs is that you can only bring back a value which is to the right of your lookup column. So if I'm looking up an ID and I'm trying to match to another ID and I want to bring back, say, a customer name, the ID has to be on the far left. And that is a problem because it basically means you have to move your data around different columns. You'll have to switch them around to get it in the right orientation. So do keep that in mind. One way around this is to use an X lookup. Now I'll go into X lookup in a future video, but I want to keep this video strictly to a V lookup. When it comes to V lookups, guys, sometimes it can break. And one of the reasons why they can break is because you are selecting between different cells in a sheet which is already filtered okay so if you've got a, a table of data and you've already filtered the table you're not looking at row one two three four five you may be looking at row one four and seven and your v lookup is all over the place because it's not really mapping from one two to all the way down to ten so what you want to do if you're in a scenario like that where you're v doing v lookup against filtered data is instead of referencing or looking up a value saying a1 you just select the entire column in column a so you're looking up column a in sheet one you're gonna to join to column A in sheet two, the entire column, and you're gonna bring back all the values in column C in sheet two. So what we've done there is we've avoided the issue of having different types of cells and reference cells were joining entirely to a column. That improves the rate and the match rate in your VLOOKUP and prevents you encountering any errors. So guys, we're now in a more complex case of a VLOOKUP and reality is here, a VLOOKUP is not gonna do the job and I'll explain why. So we have a very similar data set to our simple example here, but this time what we're looking at is we've got our names of students, we've got the ages, we need their exam score, nothing new. But in our data set, we actually have multiple people with the same name repeated multiple times. So if you look at, for example, let's say we look at Alice, for instance, we need Alice who lives in Cardiff, age 16, we need her exam score. But if you look carefully here, Alice actually appears once and twice. So she appears twice here with two different exam scores. Not the fact that she appears twice, it's that there's two different people by the name of Alice in our data set. So you've got Alice in Liverpool, and you've got Alice in Cardiff. But the one we need is the is Alice in Cardiff. Now, typically, the way people would do this, or you'd think about doing this, is you do two VLOOKUPs. You do one on the name, and then another one on the city. But reality is, that's not how VLOOKUPs work. VLOOKUPs only work on one value at a time. You can't do two separate VLOOKUPs, one for Alice, one for Liverpool. So you might have a column that says name match, and another column that says city match. And where they're yes and yes, you then have your correct exam score, or you do a trick, which I use and I frequently recommend to people is to use the custom key or custom ID trick. So the way it works is you insert a new column and you call this a, a helper key. It's called a helper key. And the way it works is you use, use a concatenate formula. What we want to concatenate is the first name followed by the city, and then we want to close it. So now what we have is a unique key so rather than joining on name and city, we'll combine the both the two of them and we drag that down. Now what we can do is do the same on the other side. So here we create a new column called a helper key and we do the same thing. So equals concatenate and we do name and then city and that gives us a helper key on the other side. And now what we can do is do a join on the data set using helper key instead of the name. So now we're going to type in our VLOOKUP. We're going to join on on the helper key. We're going to hit a comma. And now instead of selecting the full date range, our helper key, we need our value that we're looking to join on must be in the far on the far left column. So we're going to start right here as our range. So instead of selecting the entire thing, we're going to start from here. So we're going to look up on helper key and we're going to bring back exam score and helper keys in the most far left of all of our columns. So once again, we need to anchor this, anchor the range. We're looking for column one, column two. We want to bring back column two because column one is our helper key. So column two is our exam score. And then again, we're only looking for an exact match. So you're going to enter false 
and then that's it. Now we can drag this down, we're going to make these percentages and let's just double check that Alice Cardiff for instance is a right exam score. So here you can see Alice Cardiff is 83%, Alice Liverpool 78 we want the 83% and we have correctly bought in the 83%. So the helper key guys is very useful. It addresses the need to create multiple VLOOKUPs, but more importantly, it's a really clean cut way of doing a VLOOKUP by using a really helpful formula, which is a concatenate formula and combining two strings together to allow you to then do a simple VLOOKUP. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video on VLOOKUPs. I still use VLOOKUPs to this day. The reason why I still use VLOOKUPs is because most data sets that I play with are not huge. There are often 50,000 rows, 20,000 rows held, sometimes even 100 rows. So there's no need for me to really produce a Python script or a SQL script for something so small that I can quickly join and do a VLOOKUP against to join the data. It makes no sense writing up any code when you can quickly do a VLOOKUP to produce some results. If you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.